Hey everyone, Eric Watson here, Freelance Writer, Player of Games, Writer of Board, Recorder of Videos, and Tabletop Role Playing Aficionado. Welcome to the Thursday edition of Bye Bye, a weekly behind the scenes DM only live stream, Crafting the Deep, in which I build, write, and prepare for our next session of Call from the Deep. If you're playing characters, Gotwald, Mox, Sovereign, Twirl, the stream is not meant for you, but for the rest of you, welcome. We stream our DD sessions live on YouTube every Friday. You can join our official Discord server with invite link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, please check out patreon.com slash roguewatson. For our campaign, we use Roll20. Streaming, I use OBS Studio. Apologize for being slightly late. Uh, stop me if you've heard this before, but I've been very busy. <laughs> it's been a very busy week. If there was ever a time for me to get sick just because of stress and physical exhaustion, now would probably be it. So uh, hopefully by saying it out loud, it won't happen. Um, I'm the opposite of manifesting it, I guess, because that would be the last thing that I need. But also, it's always awkward to do these uh, crafting streams for Call from the Deep when I am busy preparing all my last-minute preps for tonight's uh, next patron game. Uh, so I've got all my mind focused on that situation and scenario, and I'm reverting back to Call from the Deep, which is going on Friday. I don't even have my things open because I am so prepared. Where are we? We are in Final Enemy. Uh, talking about... Level 3, because we think that's the level in which the players are going to infiltrate the full layer. We do have battle maps set up for uh, boat and water encounters. We'll throw some swagat on there. It's Unfortunately, the whole first half of this, maybe first third of the session on Friday is going to be a shit show. We'll just see how it goes with the players making decisions and trying to figure out how to infiltrate uh, this area. But then we're deciding on uh, doing the things that we can better prepare for, which is the dungeon layout itself and how well the as-written dungeon compares to uh, the pacing that I'm looking for for a more stealthy infiltration mission where the party has several sub-objectives to work through that do not involve attacking everyone in here because uh, some of these areas are just absolutely full of bad guys and would not do them very well. To attack head on. Uh, this map is provided by our Bear Gardener. Shout out to Bear, uh, patron and cartographer. You can find his work at patreon.com slash Bear Gardener and should be a link in the description. Has done maps for basically all of the Ghosts of Saltmarsh content that I have run in this campaign. That includes Sinister Secret of Saltmarsh, the, uh, the Haunted Mansion maps, as well as the Sea Ghost. Uh, maps, uh, the salvage operation maps, which he very graciously actually edited for me because the basic maps have all the spider webs, and I really, really changed a lot of what that dungeon entails. We removed all that, and also uh, provided me with a basic map uh, of the Sea Ghost deck that I could use for their kind of generic. Uh, let's see this map right here uh, for their encounters that they have, which we recently used with the uh, Sawagan encounter. And then most recently with the final enemy. And uh, we'll also be providing maps for the styes, which is going to be the next uh, quest that we'll be doing after this one. So huge, huge, awesome. As Forrest Gump would say, that's one less thing we have to worry about uh, when it comes to the maps. Because if there's one challenge with this entire campaign is that both Ghosts of Saltmarsh and Call from the Deep had just shit-tastic maps that are not... I, sh I should stop disparaging. I mean, this style, I don't know, man. If you're running graph paper, old school art, it looks great. But if you're running it on a modern virtual tabletop, it's not going to cut the mustard. So, which is all that I do, basically. So I'm always looking for wonderful map art to transpose the ideas and make it look good. Although, you know, the, a lot of the original map design is here. Well, this is actually a one-to-one -one, uh, transition. And you can see these long-ass hallways. The whole map is just overly big. And none of that is Bear's fault. It's it's the original module did that. And it, that tends to be the... Just how those old dungeons were designed. It's all these long ass hallways and you know everything that can be fit on a sheet of graph paper, grid paper, uh, which I don't think translates too well to a modern virtual tabletop, but thankfully this art kind of helps make up for that. I wonder if I should be putting the numbers on here, if that would actually help me quite a bit. Also, it's already a big map and it's was uh, basically subdivided. So it's even it looks larger, right? I'm I'm zoomed out to 70% right now. This is 100%. We would have to scroll for days just to get around uh, this map. So it's just it's just gigantic, and this is only one level. So if we want to actually go with the original level three. 
which is uh, zoomed out at 60. So you can see this map uh, has been subdivided and it's shorter to zoom around in, but all the tokens are tinier. What Bear has done is instead essentially double the map's size. Oh, hey, you're in the chat, awesome. Uh, which I think I prefer generally for Roll20 whenever you have a map that uses 10 foot square grids, which fuck that map size, man. Five foot square grids is how 5e works. Like you just cannot play a virtual tabletop without five foot square grids. Ah, uh, anyway, and it, it kills me whenever you have maps. And this happened a few times in Run of the Frostbane as well and, and Tomb, where you had a few maps that were just 10 foot square maps, and you have two choices with that. You can either subdivide the maps and give and you know create little five foot squares within them and, and that results in teeny tiny tokens or the other option is you essentially divide uh, sorry double the map size if the resolution supports that and then it does line up but then the map itself just becomes absolutely gigantic i think i prefer the latter uh over the tiny tokens but uh you know they're both problematic for different reasons so this is what the original one uh, looks like, and I'm debating on whether it's worth keeping all these uh, numbers and letters on there just to help me identify what certain rooms are. But nothing is going to line up if I copy and paste because all that shit is super tiny. We could just have tiny numbers. It's actually kind of cute. A, B, C. All right, that's actually not too bad. We don't have to resize these. What else can I put in these jail cells? I don't want to use the sea lion because it doesn't make any freaking sense that there's a sea lion under in an underwater dungeon because they're not aquatic creatures. They're not, they can't live underwater. They can hold their breath for a long time, but not that long. We could put an air bubble in one of these and put Neverwinter uh, prisoners in one of these cells. Unfortunately, I think this is the only dungeon location uh, the, the only like jail cell location in the dungeons. I'm not sure if there's another one, and I kind of wrote myself into a corner saying that they do take prisoners, and there's prisoners here. But how do they take the Neverwinter prisoners? They e they either have to use that air bubble system, or they have those magic stones that create the air bubble, which is what they did in Wreck of the Golden Crown. Or, in fact, I wonder if chapter... Uh, let's see, what is it? Chapter 3? Chapter 2 would explain how they kidnap people. Uh, which one is a Sawagan attack? Waterdeep the Black Armada. Ch -ch -ch attack on Waterdeep, maybe? Is this the one? Yeah, this is the Sawagan. Well, this is the one where they're capturing people, though. Shoot. I think, th I thought they mentioned it somewhere where they give people, or no, they, they do capture somebody. It's not this one. It's, um, uh, I think it's the Baldur's Gate one. They're working to capture a certain person. Yeah, Ramazith. So how do they do that? Uh, the characters want to play on the Kraken side to capture Ramazith. The pirates leave as many captives as possible, keeping them alive by forcing potions of water breathing down their throats. Okay, well that's a temporary solution. That gives you one hour. Okay, move to pirate. Track the pirates down if they escape. Characters fail to protect Ramazith. He's taking never to Alanthor Isles, giving a seeking Tentrix. So that's it? They're just forced potions of water breathing? Uh, okay, I thought there was one instance where they gave him like a necklace of adaptation or something. Let's see if it's actually under uh, where is Ramazeth? Somewhere in here? Kraken Society here, in the process of clamping Ramazith with dimensional shackles, having already smashed down the door. That's all it says, dimensional shackles. Hmm. I assume giving everybody a necklace of adaptation would be a little crazy, because then you also would be able to give the players a bunch of necklaces of adaptations, right? That wouldn't really work very well. The air bubble thing probably... Uh, makes the most sense. My big uh, worry that, I'm, that I've been fretting over for this infiltration section uh, is that the first thing they get to is the prison. 
So it's like already they complete one of their objectives. If I put their the prisoners they come to rescue all up in these jail cells. They're like, oh, we literally just infiltrated the base. We've done almost nothing. I mean, I, you did whatever your plan is to get inside, right? And then you suddenly meet all the prisoners. You're like, oh, shoot. Well, that objective is completed. It, 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 I wish there was just a couple rooms in between, I guess, that and the dungeon. So I kind of wrote myself into a corner there because that's one of their objectives was to rescue people. And I think the only dungeon location happens to be the one attached to, like, the secret entrance outside. I, I definitely will plan on putting at least one important person in the arena currently fighting a creature. That will force the players to interact with that somehow and maybe and, and interact because the person probably wouldn't win this fight on their own. They would die. So that creates an interesting possibility. But we need to just go through and before we make any formal plans, I need to really go through room by room every area of this dungeon and uh, see what kind of changes that we can make. See, dynamic lighting is not yet fully completed here. Uh, we did talk about the the three directions they can go after the dungeons, which I was already planning on keeping the uh, Lokatha character, Borgus, because he seems fun. Uh, but perhaps moving the Triton to the arena and having uh, Harley's partner, which she has mentioned is one of the major NPCs they need to rescue, having him be the one in the arena that they have to rescue. Or I could make it be Master Sliver, which is the... Obviously, Master Splinter joke with uh, Mac. Have him be in the arena as well. Maybe both of them. Water breathing prisoners tell them about the air breathing ones to give them more exploring goals. Right, but where are they going to be the air breathing prisoners? <laughs> Got a way to find them to breathe on the way out. They do have... So the players, uh, they took the air bubble device thing. Let's see if we can go back to that. Actually, it's under Wreck of the Golden Crown. Uh, it's under W15. Around the circumference of the cabin are six stones, each marked with an arcane rune. The runes keep a permanent, refreshing bubble of air within their boundary. Uh, they can be deactivated with a dispel magic check. They must be kept within 20 feet of each other. I just like this idea because it's already established that this is how the Sawagan keep air-breathing prisoners is with this air bubble thing. And I allowed the players to just take the stones and use that as their own kind of air bubble system if they wanted to. You can just keep these stones together and then basically as you take them and pull them apart, they create like this little force bubble of air inside. But you gotta keep the stones within 20 feet and of each other and then they only make so big of a room. I don't know how you math that out, but that's as big of the areas they can make. So the players already have one of those they're carrying around so they can instantly create like an air bubble system. And then I can put that, put more of those wherever I want and make it so that they're each tied to each other. So you can't just keep adding more and creating this hilariously big air bubble system. Air breathing prisoners are level one. That's true. That's true. Um, and they're and they're currently being used as slave labor. So that's actually a good point, uh, Refus, which is why we need to go through and look at all the rooms again. Uh, I believe there it's established they're using uh, captured people to help kind of renovate that first level. When our mission begins. I think, in fact, they're kept shackled in 13 and they're currently working in 19. We can replace the dying guy, Elmo, Elmo the Emaciated, <laughs> uh, with another person from Neverwinter. Maybe even Master Sliver is dying. We can state. Okay, so what about number 19? The hall. Ten slaves in this area. Four orcs, four ho ho blah, hobgoblins, and two lizard folk. So we can replace most of those. Uh, we can probably keep the lizard folk because they would be left over from the attack, but then replace the orcs and hobgoblins with just, I don't know, human, haveling, whatever races from Neverwinter specifically would be their latest influx of prisoners okay so that makes sense uh and that's something that he can that the under and so they wouldn't be kept in the underwater one necessarily so maybe i don't have to use the air bubble system anymore 
and thus it makes more sense for the Triton to be down here fighting somebody because he wouldn't need some kind of extra air protection like any other people would. And that would force the players to go up to level 1 at some point, wouldn't it? So the good news is they'll get to area 50 and they'll get uh, they'll get a chance to talk to somebody on the inside pretty quickly and get some more intel and updates because I want to give them as much information as I can while still you know making it an unknown dungeon crawl situation. Hopefully give them some advantages coming into this thing. Okay, well, somewhere over there. 50. 52. 51, I think. So this is a secret area. Ooh, Captain Callus. Uh, I do need to follow up with Captain because I never did meet up with him again. I don't know if I want to use him there. Did they have any other people in Neverwinter that they knew? Maybe the Harbor Master. No, because I think I mentioned that she recovered and she was still alive. If I was smart, I would have had her get kidnapped. I don't remember any NPCs that were in Neverwinter they care about that could be captured that yeah I don't know but I've got I've got the lizard folk queen which I think I'll put her in the temple and I've got the triton partner of Harley who I can put in the arena and then just kind of generic neverwinter people can be in level one so I'm actually really separating all the prisoners so they're not going to get uh, hardly any of that objective done in the in area 50. All right, so where are we catching up to this? So 50, 51 and 52. Oh, my bad. 50 was actually this room. That's 48 and 49 over there. Okay, so 50 and 52 had the sharks, the shell sharks, which are a lot stronger. They're like armored sharks. I don't know if I can find a unique token for that or not. Sharks with 18 AC and magic resistance is pretty nasty. They're just guarding the storage room, which the storage room is pretty empty, except there's a secret door in uh, area 52. Treasure chamber. Trapped with a glyph of warding spell. Noticing the door requires a DC 14 perception check. I wonder what everybody's passive is at. Let's check. So usually we have pretty high perception amongst the players. 13 for Gottwald. Because most people aren't checking for secret doors all the time. That's where passive comes in. 14 for Mac. So Mac would notice it. 14 for Savra. She would also notice it. And 12 for Twirl. This might be, in addition to having no dark vision, the lowest... The least perceptive party we've had. Usually we have one person who's like just crazy high perception or has alert or something. These guys, not so much. So Mac and Savra would be able to notice this. Basically, as soon as they're in the room, uh, a stone slab hinged along its top edge. It swings open toward 52. Examine the two trines in the south end of the rack. When these well knows that their tines are blunt, not sharp. They're used to prop up the secret door when it is open. <laughs> But it's trapped with a glyph of warding spell. I have to make a DC 15 investigation check while examining the floor in this area. Triggered if any creature passes from the corridor into the chamber. If that occurs, each creature within 20 feet of the glyph must make a DC 15 deck save, taking 5d8 cold damage. And that becomes the... I think it's like the Baron's personal treasure stash. God, the coffer is also trapped. Good lord. So you've got a secret door... A trapped hallway and a trapped treasure chest. What is in there then that is so well guarded? And there's sharks outside. A stone slab springs out of the ceiling in the passage, knocking the secret door closed. And with sufficient force to break the trines if they're being used to support the secret door. Any creature standing near the door must make a successful DC 14 deck save or take 48 bludgeoning damage from the door as it closes. Wow, so it just traps you? 
Slab is badly damaged, riddled with cracks after crashing into the doorway. The party can spend a few minutes clearing the rubble away to gain access to the exit, or a character can make a successful DC 18 strength check to clear the rubble in a matter of moments. The bad thing is the sound of the slab being smashed rings through nearby rooms, drawing the attention of three Sawagan champions in Area 50, which would not be there because the players will have come through this way pretty much. And I'm replacing these Sawagan champions with, I think, a deep diver and a regular Sawagan. They arrive five minutes later with 12 Sawagan and two Quarrel Smashers drawn from Area 60, which is the barracks at the very bottom where all the Sawagan come from. The treasure, which has two traps and a secret door, is 500 Electrum pieces. Well, that's four canvas sacks. The coffer, which I guess is the other... It actually triggers the slab trap. Has two platinum and pearl coronets, 700 gold each, a fine pearl necklace, 500 gold, two gold wristbands, and laid with diamonds, 250 gold each. Silver ring bearing the signet of the Prince of Monmerg, and 220 platinum, just a bunch of gold. No magic items, but a lot of gold. All right. Welcome to classic dungeon design, sir. <laughs> If it's cold damage, you could have the glyph trap them in a big ice block. That'll give the players something to figure out. That'd be kind of fun, actually. Or even make, like, a big ice... You could combine that with the uh, slab trap and just have it be... It creates, like, a wall of ice right there instead of a crashing slab. That way it combines with... It's, like, just a huge ice trap that not only does damage, but, like, creates this giant block of ice, presumably to trap... Anybody sneaking their way in there, and then at some point, the guards make their way in there. So I guess I need to make that a secret door. I need to finish drawing it, though. Zooming in. We can probably keep the treasure like it is, though. That's actually a pretty good payday. I feel like the party's got... Plenty of magic items right now, and hopefully there are more they can get in here. I haven't looked at that. What kind of magic items they can actually acquire. Uh, probably are going to be on the enemies. I'm going to make a... So the stairs are just visible there. So really, I would make it to where they can go up the stairs without triggering this shark battle, I think. If they were smart enough to, I don't know, not linger or something. Let's see. And then door. Seek. I guess it's not locked. Right? Because once you find the secret door, you're good to go. may have to test this by joining as a player, but I think that'll look okay. All right, so that's that area. I do have some fond trap memories. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of like death trap style stuff, right? It's like Rears of the Lost Ark style or... or Last Crusade. Where it's just kind of fuck you traps. <laughs> I think they can be fun if used sparingly. Or you, you're playing a dungeon specifically with just nothing but fuck you death traps in it. Alright, the other side is where we didn't quite get to on Monday's stream. Which is full of swaggin over here. Trying to plan like generally where party's gonna go and how soon they're gonna hit everything. So this is just another barrack section. So it's forty eight and forty nine. Yeah, forty eight is barracks, which has a champion, four coral smashers, a wave shaper, and two deep divers. That is an insane amount of dudes. These deep divers are CR4 apiece with 90 hit points, by the way, which I'm using as one of the jailers. So they're actually stronger than the champions. That's painful. So they really don't want to go this way. 
Once it's swung and spots the party, the wayfaber tries to flee up the stairs to find help. Exercise care, for even if the two upper levels have been completely cleared out of Swagan, there are enough Swagan in various parts of the level to devastate the party. I, I feel like this sentence should be at the very top of the dungeon. The wave shaper gets away, it returns to join the fight along with a guard patrol. 3t6 plus 6 rounds after the wave shaper makes its escape. 36 coffers in the room, long search of all the coffers, turn up a total of 390 electrum pieces. Why are we using electrum pieces? It's like finding uh, $2 bills or something. <laughs> it's like they don't... It's just dumb. 49 has an armory, uh, which is kind of some minor loot. Tridents engraved with a pearl, 10 gold each. Basically, this way is not a great way to go, but there's two. Is that two options to get to level two? I guess the bottom barracks also lead up. There's three options in. All right, so let's get that dynamic lighting going. Which is from there down to there. Drawn the lines, drawn the lines. We are drawing some more lines. I finally started watching uh, X-Men 97 also. Huge fan of the original back in the day. Probably started my love of Marvel. And we were in the midst of re-watching the old series and showing it to my kids for the first time uh, over the last year. And then by the time they announced X-Men 97, I think we were on like season four. So we didn't have that much more. So I was like, let's just finish watching this series. And then when we're done with that, we'll watch the new series. So we're able to go right from one into the other, which, man, I'd forgotten. Season five is weird because they changed the art style for like the last eight or so episodes. And it's real weird compared to everything else. But I did watch the first episode of 97, and it's awesome. All the way down to the... don't know if this is supposed to be a proper wall, and I'm not going to probably do it here yet. And I saw the uh, Fallout show is available, or at least maybe part of it. So I'm excited about watching that as well. I've played all the Fallout games. Never finished four. Fallout one and two were some of my favorite games back in the day. I played them multiple times, which is not something I can boast for too many RPGs because they're big. <laughs> draw the lines, draw the lines. I assume they're never going to actually get to the barracks because it's kind of a death sentence. But they don't know that, right? They don't know what rooms are full of bad guys, necessarily. I need to get a lot of this third level done. It's really easy to make the dynamic lighting for the giant thick walls. Thank you, Bear. <laughs> I like thick walls. There we go. Let me get this little block right there. Make sure the arena is blocked off. funny where if the players had like vision like I did they would see like half the dungeon under construction like while they're exploring it <laughs> famously that bit me in the ass during our very first dungeon crawl back in the day with Lost Mine of Fendover I was still working on Wave Echo Cave and was not quite aware that the party could make it all the way to the boss room in like three easy steps 
which is kind of my first lesson in like, oh, I need to actually look at the dungeon design and realize that sometimes, and I like a good open dungeon, but that was an example where like, oh, I didn't actually want you guys to make it this far this soon. I literally had to have the door like specially locked and like, nope, sorry, it's still under construction here. <laughs> nice, checking out the Fallout show. Don't corpses float? How are the zomboys going to make it down there? That's a good question. We should uh, come up with that. Maybe tie some weights. Uh, they don't definitely don't have a swim speed. Don't corpses float? <laughs> yeah, maybe fill them with sand or something. Sand shoes would probably help. Make it tricky for them to get around. Love to Xbox 97. Even has the authentic 90s experience of winning a week for the new episode. Yeah. I You know, I actually like the the old school method of having to wait for new episodes. I don't like what Netflix established, which is like, oh, we're going to release an entire season at once because it destroys the episode by episode uh, discussion uh, that, that could be so fun and relevant with social media and everybody having access to be able to chat with each other about it too. Picture, uh, what, uh, Game of Thrones is probably the best example I can think of. Where like every week everybody would dissect and talk about the individual episode or maybe like Walking Dead to an extent. And it was like such a big thing. But like when something like Stranger Things comes out, it gets real awkward. Where it's like, hey, have you watched the season yet? Like, no, okay, we can't talk about it yet. And then you don't get to talk about any like, you don't get those huge highlights of individual episodes. Instead, we're just talking about the whole season together. So I actually like uh, when they break it up by episode by episode. Or a compromise could be like what they're doing with uh, what they did with Invincible which is they at least break it up into like two releases where it's like, here's the first half. And then I don't know, like a month later or something, here's the second half. So at least you've got, you know, some different discussions and things happening. I am not a binge watcher. I guess if that makes sense, the opposite of that. I like to, I like to savor my entertainment meals over days and days and days. All right. So level three, Oh, yeah, we can put a bunch of Sawagan there. I don't think we're going to use the extent to which they wanted Sawagan up there. I'm sure, these guys, mainly because the deep divers are. God, are those all champions and deep divers there too? Holy crap. That's ridiculous. We're not using any regular Sawagan stat blocks here. I mean, the Coral Smasher is fine, I guess. Uh, wave Shaper here. Let's get rid of the Deep Divers, though. They seem like they should only be used for special purposes. Like, if anything is going to have generic bad guys, it's going to be the Barracks. Where's my regular Sawagan at? Just search for it. Morgan, where are you? There we go. I feel like you could just use a couple of these guys in here. Just hanging out. We'll add more. There we go. Hey, got Mike. All right, so that's those areas. Then we go down, we've kind of covered the arena. Do I have a Triton? I think the generic Triton uh, would work, but I don't have one in here, okay. I made it without having the Triton in here yet. What? Come on, there's a basic Triton somewhere. Where are all the ones I have from Mythic Odysseys? Huh. Is it? That's weird. I thought it was a generic Triton stat block. 
some reason it's not showing up here. Hmm. They added it as a race in Mordenkainen's. This is the art I'm looking for in a monster. But then actually add it as an NPC, huh? What the hell did I use for uh, the Triton they have now then? Am I crazy? Oh yeah, it was this one I used. Triton Shore Stalker. Okay. I need to make a token out of this guy then. That's the one I was picturing about using. Well, let's add the Shore Stalker and we'll change the token later, I guess. See, can I open an image? And I might be able to actually use it right here, actually. Token stamp. Let's drag your ass over. Download. Using other monitor, the tokens. Oh, I already had it in here. God damn it. <laughs> ah, I must have made this forever ago then. All right. Wait, so is it, is it under my library? I'm going insane. When, there it is. All right, I already made this freaking token. <laughs> There we go, we'll do that. Thank you, past Eric. All right, and then we'll just point you to the Triton Shore side, which I assume is what Harley is pointed to. Or does she her own stat block? Yeah, I think I just replaced it with a generic short sword though. Maybe I should just duplicate hers. All right, let's do this. Let's duplicate yours. Then let's drag it. And we can add it to ally NPCs. That's fine. I, I deleted Chandri doesn't. She exists in here to remind me, but uh, she's not showing up as a ally anymore for the party. And we're going to rename you uh, Kish, I think was the name. Can include this artwork. And we'll actually save it for a second first. Change you to Kish, and I may actually let you wield a trident. Uh, let's see. Can I just drag it onto here? Let's see how well that works. Usually doesn't work very well with NPCs. Yeah, plus zero. I guess it includes the relevant stats. Trident's only 1d6. It's the same as a spear, isn't it? All right, so you would have a plus five, I think. Well, hmm. Actually, according to your stat block, that's weird. They're pictured with a trident, aren't they? But if you look at the stats, a trident, I think, can only be used strength. So I'd have to actually change the stat block for you to properly wield a trident, right? Because it's not a finesse weapon. First one means you can hold it with two hands, range, and throne. 
So you'd have to have the proper strength to wield it, which we could just give you better strength. Maybe we give you a 16 strength and a 14 dex. And then you still have a plus five. And a 1d6 plus three. For one-handed and then two-handed would be 1d8 plus three. Plus five. And then thrown can use strength. So it would also be a plus five, 1d6 plus three. Oh, that's true. I could just give him a special finesse trident. <laughs> Change the weapon. Well, there's gonna be tridents everywhere for the players to get, so I'll just I'll keep it simple tridents, I guess. I don't know. Still has those neat triton abilities. He's got higher than average hit points. I was going to say it makes two attacks. So yeah, he's got the trident. Um, his AC would go down, though. He doesn't have armor. So how does AC work? Uh, how does a triton... I'm overthinking this, I'm sure. Mordenkainen's. Does try to have any kind of AC bonus? Does not. Okay. So you would have to be wearing armor then. So Shore Stalker. It doesn't say. Just says AC 13. Uh, it's got to be wearing some kind of light armor then. I would think. Unfortunately, does not say in here. So the Tritons look a lot more monstrous in Mythic Odyssey. All right, that one does say natural armor. But again, that's for the monstrous Tritons. And I think those are slightly different Tritons. I don't know. Yeah, we'll just lower it to 12. We'll keep it fair Z squares because he has less decks. All right. So Kish, uh, so now we look at this token and we point to, it should be a Kish in here. Oh shoot, there's two of them. Oh no, we have to delete the old one. There's an existing Kish and he must be destroyed. Enemy, there he is. Hmm, this gives him a spear with a plus four. Oh, interesting. Kish here has a strength of 14. Oh man, he's got like custom stats. Okay, shit. Hmm. Only has fog cloud. Has persuasion. And sort of, yeah, different than a... Of course, I'm using the Shore Stalker, which is a different thing completely. I guess I'm making him more powerful. Which, I don't know, for a... For a 7th level party, he's just... He's not, like, super killable, but he's more vulnerable. So 14, if I if I lowered his strength to a 14, I actually might do that. So let's say he's 14 strength, 16 dex, and I'll lower his uh, offensive abilities. So four and plus two. Oh shoot, short sword actually wouldn't be lowered. He doesn't have a short sword right now. It's like, you would be better with this weapon, man. Like, no, I must use the trident. 
must embrace the stereotype. Plus four and plus two. Unless he's got a plus one trident. Plus four. Plus two. Okay. There we go. I'll, I'll leave him with Nimble Escape, though. And Gust of Wind, just for funsies. I don't see the reason to give him... Oh, yeah, Knight raises AC back up. I'm giving him more hit points, but still within the range of possibility here. 5 times 8 is 40, plus 5 is 45. I'm going to give 40 hit points. So kind of near the upper end, which I like to do on any named uh, NPC or monster. If it's a boss or just an ally or something, I'll always give him above average hit points. So now there can be only one Kish. Or no, sorry, I didn't delete the old one. So now we delete you. Be gone. Original Kish, we have no room for you now. We have only 2.0. Shit, why is it still in there? Nope, not that thing. He's not Zigzaro. Kish. All right, there you are. AC, AC. Hope you all wanted a troubleshooting on making a stat block. Yeah, just gonna have 40 hit points. Technically has vision, but I don't think it's gonna matter. All right. So now we go to the stat block I made. And we make sure we use the select token. And I'm not going to add it to player's journals until we actually come across them. Which means I should move Borgus up there too. Borgus. Uh, where is your dumbass? Are you a Lokatha or a Lokatha hunter? I think we looked at both of these. The hunter is stronger than an envenomed crossbow. That's cool. He's just a regular one. Now, this guy's a lot weaker. We could give him maybe close to 30 hit points. So let's... I don't think we're ever going to see another Lokatha, so I could probably just take this stat block and rename it. I think I'm okay with that. Oh! I want to say it like Boris from Goldeneye. Borges. I am invincible. Pierce Brosnan was my generation. <laughs> we just I got to my just mention Sean Connery too. Brosnan was my generation's bond. God, what's his face was Bond forever. Not even Sean Connery. Um, I can't think of his name now. You know the one, the one who's been doing it forever. Uh, he was in Layer Cake. I don't know. Somebody will say his name in a second. Which I think I have seen all those movies. All right, we've got our token for Kish. Be fighting an octopus, which I think is cool. Then, if we look at these side rooms, it looks like they're both the same. 50, no, 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 54, 55, 56, 57. Daniel Craig. That's it. Fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He was in a bunch of them. I kept making him after, like, I think he didn't want to do him anymore. Uh, 54 is, a, is more barracks. Yikes. 20 off-duty Sawagan here. Wow, so these are all locations the party just does not want to fuck with. They basically don't want to explore the entire bottom half of this dungeon. They want to stick to, like, this upper, these upper areas here. I guess we'll see what 56 is, but I know 60 is just full of dudes. 
Lousy with dudes. So 54 has a shit ton of Sawagan. No one's moving, so we heard the guard and has guard posts down there. Gee, yeah, so level three is bad news. They what they basically need to as soon as they make it in here, they're, I'm gonna force them to deal with the arena in some way, because that's just awesome and a marquee uh location of this dungeon. Uh, by having one of the NPCs they want to rescue in here. And then their best method is to use one of these side rooms to go the stairs and get up to level 2. And they really don't want to stick down here at level 3, it sounds like, because this is nasty. Alright, so Swagin are all over 54, which is this one. Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V, Control V. Fifty-five. All right, where are we with this? Fifty-five is the littler room. Champions' quarters. Two Swagan champions talk idly. Okay. So these guys hang out there. So that room's just death waiting to happen. So really, I didn't even have to really make up enemies. I could pull reinforcements in from multiple rooms. Hi, Bear. Thanks for stopping by. Still not confirmed the next person to be Bond. We could all expect a call. <laughs> I don't... Have they... Haven't they done literally all the original stories by now? I feel like... I mean, we already did, like, the origin story. Like, I feel like Craig's did a pretty good job of going through, like, canonically with, like, the rise of it and... Past villains, they like did a whole thing with uh, M. Like I, I don't know, it, it feels like it was kind of a complete arc. I, I just don't know. I guess you can't keep a good franchise down unless you're poor Ghostbusters. They can't seem to make any money with those. <laughs> I never saw the most recent movie. I thought Aftermath was really fun, but uh, it didn't make a very much money. I think it was right around the pandemic, also. And this other one also did not do very well at the box office, apparently. D7 is a Wave Shaper's Quarters, which is up here. One Sawagan ma Wave Shaper magically assembles and disassembles the salt on the table. Why? And there's a guard, or sorry, that's 50, 56 and 57. Okay. Uh, so Currently only reserved for wave shapers. Two wave shapers, six swagged, and two shell sharks occupy this room. So there's like minor loot, but you really you can't afford to be going like breaking down the doors and attacking these guys. Not that any of these actually have formal doors. Because it's underwater. Alright. I think I've already got a wave shaper somewhere, but let's grab one. There. Okay. You are older than me. I was born the same year as Ghostbusters, so I... I grew up with it being a franchise, for sure. But I was obviously way too young. Uh, I played with the toys and watched the cartoon, which aired, I want to say, early 90s, late 80s, somewhere around there. I think it was after the second... I don't... Was it 80s? I don't remember. But I remember being really into the... It was... Weirdly, I remember it being very similar to, like, Terminator and Predator and Aliens, where it's like, they these movies were not at all marketed to kids, but we had toys of them. <laughs> and I read, like, comics of them. Very, very strange era of these, like, not at all, like, mostly R-rated action movies and sci-fi movies that suddenly... Like, I don't know, they, they marketed to kids after the fact, and they were like, let's make toys and stuff, and action figures. So I got into all those franchises that way, even though I was too young to watch the movies at the time, for sure. I also, I've, I've ranted about this before, I hate, hate, hate that the first, like, ghost scene in Ghostbusters is the scariest part of that movie. It's like a legit jump scare. 
And like the rest of the movie is nothing like that. And that was like, I remember watching it as a kid, uh, thinking like, okay, I need to finally watch the movie. And we got to that part and it freaked me. It's a librarian part and it freaked me the fuck out. I was like, I'm not going to watch this movie. Fuck that. And it ruined like the movie for me for like, I don't know, a while until I finally rewatched it again. And I don't know if we skipped that part or something. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like a silly comedy. But that first is like done like a legit horror section. It's just a stupid jump scare. And I'm like, damn it. Damn that movie for doing that. So that's my Ghostbuster story. 60. Temporary. So these are these side rooms right here, which are also just full of dudes. God, all of these is just telling me that they have no business. Or sorry, 58 and 59 are the two side rooms. Yeah, Swag and Champions and Six Swag and there's net traps, there's gates. So they're basically guarding the bottom though. They're not guarding against the top because they would this is a main entrance. And then this area is just full of Swagan. So basically what I've learned is level three is pretty bad for the purpose of their mission. They won't know that going into it, but maybe some of the allies they rescue. We'll be able to tell them, like, hey, this area is crawling with dudes. A lot of the barracks and living chambers are here on this third level. Um, most of the air... I, I do know that there's air-breathing prisoners. They're kept usually at the top because that's where air still is. Uh, that's why they have these prisoners to help renovate before the rest of it's sunk. And then all the big important stuff happens in the second level because it's the most protected and contained. So based on that information... Uh, they should know not to jack with this bottom half. So I'm not probably not going to spend too much time filling out. I'll throw like some more tokens and stuff in there. But honestly, that's kind of the I I'm picturing the party skipping a good chunk of third level. I'm gonna they're gonna come in through the dungeon. I presume we'll we'll set up level one just in case. Come in through the dungeon, and then I think it's really up to them whether they want to go the left side or the right side. Either side has enemies, and then those lead to stay. Or they will have to jack with the arena also, which I'm very excited about. Uh, and that could bring in a bunch of enemies and force them to flee and all that. But then they still have uh, both those paths on level 3 can take them to level 2. And I think level 2 is where they will actually spend the majority of their dungeon crawling. Because that's where the temple is going to be. That's where the throne room is. Depending on which side they come in could make a big difference. And that's a lot of their main quest stuff. And then they'll have to eventually go up to level 1... Which I think the only way to get to level 1 is via room 20 down here. And then that'll, that'll be the way they can rescue more people. So yeah, I see us using probably not very much of level 3, a lot of level 2, and then level 1, mainly that one room. And then perhaps we can even montage them or do some kind of chase sequence or something because that level 1 is of course notoriously empty And uh, as they make their way out of this dungeon. So I don't know how far we're going to make it this Friday. Um, given the complexity of their plan and the encounters I want to throw at, or don't want to throw at them, but maybe forced to throw at them, that's going to change things around, but I could definitely see us, uh, certainly making it into the dungeon by this Friday, and probably this first fight, which I have replaced the three Sawagan champions with one Deep Diver and one Sawagan, uh, regular Sawagan, I may throw another regular one in there, just milling around here. Um, in terms of prisoners in these cells... I don't know. I hate to leave them all empty. Um, but the only ones that are in here, I guess I'll have one of these be open because that's kind of where this guy was. I don't know why they're torturing him. I'll have to come up with that excuse. And then the uh, uh, the Triton was recently freed to uh, have a big battle to the death. I don't know. Maybe I can keep a creature. Hmm. I don't know what else I can put in the cells. We'll see. There's another sea creature or something, but I've already got enough. I don't have too many, like, you know, NPC allies to give to the party either. But uh, then we'll decide on where to go from there, and maybe we'll even do some of the arena, or maybe when we get to the arena, that's when we end the session. I don't know. We'll we'll see how far we get. But I'll have the arena prepped. Uh, we'll have, obviously, this dungeon prepped, and then both side rooms are just going to be combat encounters with that one secret trap area on the left side. All right, I think that will do it. We started late, but I ran late, so there you go. Everything's even, Steven. Uh, that will do it for this Craft in the Deep, though. If you enjoy the content, please do check out patreon.com slash roguewatson. Hear more about me ranting various movies that I did this session. 
Uh, shout outs, of course, to the patrons, Platinum patrons, Joe, Will, Thomas, Dan, Brennan, Senator Eclectic, Roleplayer, Roll, Christopher, Corey, Big Nut, John F., John L., Eric, Tyler, Nathan, Crystal, Counselor, Andrew, Daryl, The Reldron, Captain Woody, 79, Stephanie, Andy, Patrick, Jason, Ismail, Amit, Lovey, Spud, Sharni, David, William, Amnesiac, and Gold Patrons, RPG, Paper, Crafts, Pretty Boy, and Yuma, The Lizard, Lion, Sam, Drome, Nathan, Fast, Legator, Scott, Repus, Carolyn, Jerry, Glenn, Marcus, and Mark. Thank you all very much for your support. If you are a patron signed up for the game, I will see you uh, tonight. Otherwise, I will see the rest of you tomorrow for D&D.